So, as artists, our role is to create and imagine new worlds. So I often wonder, what is my role in preserving and improving the real world, the only one we have? In a way, my inclination towards creating new realities was born when my own reality was shattered. Growing up in Serbia, uh, I lived between two wars from the ages of 8 to 18 and watched my world be destroyed. That brought me to understanding of the fragility of all the things we hold precious. And in a way, my inclination towards creating new realities was born out of that. So I decided to create the work that raises awareness and shifts perspectives around pressing issues of our time through storytelling, using any medium at my disposal, which led me to three years ago create a new reality company with my friend and creative partner, Winslow Porter. Um, we, at the very beginning, had very little funds, so we could only afford a part-time desk in emerging art and tech incubator in New York City. Uh, we also wanted to use virtual and augmented reality to tell the pressing stories of our times, but at that time, the technology was not even invented fully yet. But what we did have was passion, dedication, and incredibly talented and supportive team. So all of us uh, wanted to tell those same pressing stories of our times, and we didn't have another you know, choice but to embark on this journey of creating two virtual reality projects. So the first one, called Giant, uh, deals with the topic of war. And the second one, called Three, uh, is exploring the topic of climate change. Um, to, this to this date, these pieces were brought to 110 festivals in places all around the globe, starting from everywhere from Sundance Film Festival to Cannes, from United Arab Emirates to New Zealand and South Korea. And they were leaving audiences from all the different backgrounds and cultures with a very similar reaction. Wow. Oh my god! Wow! This is cool! <laughs> the trees move the tree. Wow! Wow! <laughs> She was very anxious, very sad. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is one of the most remarkable things I've had a chance to experience. No! Stop, don't come to me! And I learned that crazy things can happen to trees when humans don't take care of them. There's no way to phrase the experience, no. So our first uh, virtual reality project, uh, Giant, places you in a basement with a family that is hiding during war from the bombs falling all around them. Um, so in this piece, uh, at first, uh, they're trying, to, those two young parents are trying to protect their young daughter by inventing a story that these loud explosions that they're here are in fact the huge footsteps of a giant that is coming towards their building and wants to play with the little girl. So we designed uh, this story uh, and we intentionally didn't want to name the conflict or a country where this is happening because we wanted to convey the universal picture of horrors of war. And also we designed these characters to be Americans so that uh, the audience who, has, who most likely hasn't been in such situations can easily connect to, this, to the story. At first, when I started writing script with the uh, uh, screenwriter Lizzie Donahue, uh, we first uh, envisioned this story to be a traditional short film. But when I imagined the audience viewing it from the distance, just like any traditional movie today, uh, I thought that this wouldn't do justice to a story. 
And I was already familiar with the early work of virtual reality uh, and saw its huge potential to place the viewer at the epicenter of a story. So that's how I decided to place you as an audience in, inside the war zone with them. Uh, so people, when they came out of the installation, when they finished watching the experience, they actually started coming out in tears, telling us that they now understand what others are going through. And because despite our immense intellectual capability to rationalize, communicate, and visualize, there is nothing that can compare to our primal experience of feeling something for oneself. So in Giant, we explore the destructive uh, side and the dark side of human nature, the forces that make us murder one another. So the time has come for us to embark on a new project uh, and explore the destruction we commit to our natural world. This project is called Tree because in it you embody a rainforest tree where your arms become branches and body becomes the trunk of a tree. Uh, and in this experience, you get to witness firsthand how does it feel to be born out of seed, grow and thrive, reach the fullest height, and eventually be destroyed by humans. So Winslow and I decided to use again virtual reality and add extra sensory elements to it. So for example, when you're underground, you can smell the soil. When you're above the ground, you can smell the scent of a rainforest. Also, you can feel uh, on your back the vibration of that unfortunate destruction when it takes place. Also, you feel the heat on your body, the change of the temperature. And when you reach this fullest height, you can feel the wind. So now I want to show you a trailer for three. But at the end of the experience, when, we, uh, when people get out of the headset, uh, the experience is not over. We actually have a gift for them because it does end on the, on the negative and, and sad note. We actually give everyone a seed of a Kapok tree that they have just embodied and became. And we give them that seed with a message, take this seed as a reminder to keep our forest standing. Because there is still something that we can all do. And we have found that people coming out of the experience really uh, told us that they now understand what is happening all around us. They also told us that they now see nature in a completely different way, but they also understood deforestation on another level, on a personal level, because it did happen to them now. Um, our main... Uh, conservation partner, NGO, was Rainforest Alliance. They helped us with their advisors to depict this Amazon rainforest in the most accurate way possible. So in the latest report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued in October 2018, United Nations warns us that we are destroying the natural world at such a fast pace that we are accelerating climate change and we will suffer catastrophic consequences by 2030. This is decades sooner than even our most dire predictions have been. So by taking immediate action, we are not simply trying to make a world a better place for us to live. At this moment, we are quite literally fighting for our survival on this planet. And rainforests are actually our greatest natural allies in slowing down climate change. They are the very lungs of the earth. And or rather actually what remains of them right now. And in only 2017, we have destroyed 40, 40 football fields of trees every minute. And this is the reason we are right now embarking on our new project called Rainforest. That is an augmented reality or AR, AR game. And this will be to, the, to this date, the most ambitious project we have ever embarked on. And at this very moment, we are fundraising for it in order to expand our team, in order to create the project and bring it to the widest audience possible. 
So now I want to walk you a little bit how this game is going to uh, be. But I would li like to ask you to all close your eyes and start imagining with me things. Thank you. So start imagining holding seeds in your hands and slowly start walking around the room in your imagination and start planting these seeds everywhere around you. And start seeing the rainforest trees emerging from those seeds. Start seeing the grass showing up, pairing with insects and animals. Start imagining all the natural world uh, popping in the place where you are right now. So you can now open your eyes. So this will be exactly what our players will be doing in the game. Uh, millions of users around the world will be able to download this gaming app on their phones or to play it on the uh, mixed reality head-mounted devices such as Magic Leap by simply tapping all around them and creating virtual rainforest. Uh, this will be a social experience because I will be able to see your tree, you'll be able to see the tree I planted, we'll, we will all be able to see each other's trees. And this game is not going to be about competing against each other, but rather helping each other, adding seeds and creating entire virtual ecosystem together. Because the only way to win in this larger game of survival called, that we call life is together. So, my team and I have been creating virtual and augmented worlds for, for people to explore and hopefully when they come back to their real world, they can make some change. Um, but the question is, how does one take such a colossal topic, such as climate change and wars? Well, there are a million ways. So the question is really not how. The question is, will we? Will I? So it took me two wars to, for me to face these questions that eventually brought me to, you know, that changed my life and brought me to my own path and my own mission, which is creating uh, transformative art projects and serving humanity and planet and helping other individuals and companies do so. So the question I want to ask you is, what kind of world do you want to leave behind? Is it going to be a planet flooded with despair, destruction, and fear? On a, or a planet filled with love, wonder, and hope? Life is precious for us for a reason. And what is your reason? Thank you. <laughs>